resolution view showing several um, uh, craters, including this large one. The, this, this is where we'll focus our attention for the moment because we have a high resolution strip image here in the white box that came out across the desert floor down the crater wall and out over this, uh, this dark area here. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, well, I, uh, notice the, the uh, weird dark shape here. Our strip image just samples that dark area here. And when we look at the high resolution strip image, there is nothing to see in this part. It's just uh, uh, sand, uh, uh, some undulations in the sand, some small uh, craters of no significance. Then it gets darker as you go down the wall of the crater. Then you go out on the floor of the crater, and you come to this dark area. And what do we see in that dark area? We see this. This is just the, the end of that dark flow area uh, on the floor of the crater. Very unusual uh, formations, I'm sure you're, you'll agree. Uh, the, also, the suddenness with, with which they end uh, and uh, the, uh, the contrast of the white areas here, almost frost-like, and the black area. It's, uh, many theories have been put forward to explain them. The vegetative one is doing well because uh, not this particular one, but some of uh, the places where these spots are seen, they have now been photographed at different seasons, and indeed they grow in the spring, peak in the summer, fade away in the fall, and are uh, mostly gone in the winter. Uh, here's another place where we have uh, spots in uh, the, one of the winter seasons, and here is a place where we have spots in, the, in a summer season. This almost looks like it's melted at some point, and we have uh, a flow feature. Here are some more spots. Uh, this feature is blown up uh, in here to, so we can see it in high resolution. This is a completely different feature showing uh, what looked like almost an organized field of triangular looking uh, spots. Maybe a different thing altogether. There are many places on Mars where there are tracks and when we view them at high resolution they look to be a bit more than just, um, uh, well, as, uh, as the going theory has it, uh, dust devil tracks. Um, there are even uh, little, uh, if you will, tread-like marks uh, in the interior. Um, it has been suggested that these represent uh, the movement locations of, uh, of machinery. Uh, we don't know uh, what they are, but there is a curious tendency to clip the, uh, the to pass tangentially by the edges of craters. We see that repeated far more often than, it, than ought to be chance. Uh, here are several of these tracks in a low resolution view so, showing that they go over long distances and roughly parallel one another. Um, the little white box uh, you see in there, um, right there, uh, uh, this, uh, this track is shown in high resolution over here. And even though uh, that was sort of a random uh, point on this track to catch with the spacecraft, we see that, again, it's perfectly tangent to a crater uh, where the track goes by. So these things don't seem to go randomly across the surface, but tangentially uh, by craters. Uh, you can see that behavior uh, in other places here, too. And there are some other tracks, too. And a curious feature of these, uh, besides their splitting, and in this case, uh, right angle bends, uh, is that they're often accompanied by these uh, spot-like or shrub-like things that uh, are almost the reminiscent of the way we line our highways and roads with vegetation. Um, that pattern is seen often. Here's a, another uh, track or trail and uh, even more vegetative looking uh, stuff uh, by the side. Uh, some, this is uh, uh, this vegetative pattern continues into larger forms. Uh, we see some here and here. Uh, here it almost looks like um, structure within the vegetation, evidence of uh, individual branches. And in fact, uh, we see that uh, cer certainly in looking at this object. It has a central trunk-like area branching uh, from that. Uh, and most telling of all, since the uh, original explanation thrown out for this was a crystalline structure on the ground, 
but these things cast shadows indicating that they're well off the ground. In fact, this is uh, perhaps a couple hundred meters across and maybe 80 meters above the ground. Uh, the, about this feature, uh, it's so mar remarkably like what a tree would look like uh, seen from, a, from above uh, that uh, Arthur C. Clarke, our, the uh, well-known science fiction author, gave this quote recently. The recent discovery of life in the most improbable places, especially far down inside the Earth's crust, uh, has now convinced me that we have been equally short-sighted. Some of the amazing images for, from the Mars surveyor, especially the one we just saw, make me 95% sure that there are extensive areas of vegetation or its equivalent on Mars. In this section, let's see if I can get the title to come up. Yes, all right. Um, possible infra, uh, infrastructure remnants. I'll go through this uh, quickly. Uh, these uh, are alleged to be dust devil tracks, uh, but they uh, there's uh, also uh, some little objects in here, and those are supposed to be boulders. But when you view them uh, at high re resolution, they tend to be rather rectangular, uh, almost uh, uniformly throughout this. Uh, it, it looks almost like uh, structures or uh, buildings. And interestingly, where the, um, where the buildings cluster, the, uh, the tracks intersect more often. Uh, it's very reminiscent of what uh, archaeologists find on Earth uh, when they're finding uh, remnants of ancient civilizations. Uh, here are, are layers of. Uh, rectangular things uh, at all scales, um, uh, big things uh, with little things on their backs and littler things on their backs and so on, uh, many different scales. Here are in instances of uh, honeycomb-like patterns uh, and other rectangular things. Uh, here are things uh, suggestive of um, uh, large containers uh, or enclosures. Uh, almost uh, the way reservoirs would look on Earth if they were long abandoned. Uh, in fact, there are things that look almost like uh, viaducts uh, uh, with, uh, with tread marks across them, uh, separating the, the various reservoirs, if you will. Here's a valley. Okay. Um, a, a place with a, uh, an area that's uh, blown up over here. Uh, has quite a bit, few rectangular and, uh, and high reflectivity objects within it. Uh, a field of triangles uh, that are not at all randomly distributed but tend to line up in arcs or curves and then have linear uh, linearity to them. Uh, it's been suggested those are obelisks casting shadows, but does that make them any less anomalous? Uh, um, all right. It ch second last section here is patterns and symbols. Uh, this contains a couple of interesting items I'd like to, to show you. Uh, here is a, a view of a hexagonal crater. Um, and in it, we notice some interesting white stripes in the interior of the hexagonal crater and happen to get a later view at higher resolution. Uh, it's almost as if uh, that's where they, they wrote Made on Mars. Uh, uh, notice these white striped things uh, on the exterior, too. Um, here are some objects that look very symbolic in character, as do these. Uh, but I'll show you the uh, best example we have yet. This is the area right behind the DNM pyramid. Notice this V-shaped object and the dark markings right above. Uh, I've blown that up in uh, higher magnification here. V-shaped object, dark markings. Uh, we see other dark markings over here. To concentrate on the dark markings, uh, this almost looks like a capital B. This one looks like a, a P. This one looks like an A. This one looks like an F, possibly followed by an A. Um, 
These are, uh, I showed these because they're rather Romanesque. Some of the others uh, are not at all recognizable or look like things from other alphabets, but there's a limited number of ways you can make alphabetic characters from a few lines uh, and circles. Uh, this was the best we had without uh, doing any tricks with the imagery, um, but uh, one day uh, someone was using a video camera and photographing my screen, and it, uh, showed it showed the image much better, and we realized that the video camera not having any uh, thought at all to what was in the image, was using a noise filter to clean up what it thought was a noisy background. And when we uh, did the same thing with the computer, uh, it cleaned up the image nicely, showing that indeed the uh, objects that, uh, that look symbolic in character uh, do show up rather, uh, rather distinctly from the background. Uh, uh, the debate is obviously furious about whether or not these are real symbols or, or uh, uh, chance artifacts of nature. But obviously, if they are symbols, then it's game, set, and match for artificiality. Uh, this section is about glassy uh, stripes and tubes. And I'll just show you a few of these. Uh, the, uh, when, we, when these are um, just uh, barely uh, in contact with the surface, we see these parallel white stripes uh, in many places on Mars. But wherever the su surface is broken and fissured, we see what is, lies below, and it's these glassy tube-like objects. Uh, one, this one is shown in a blow-up over here. The white stripes are what we see on the surface but they are glassy because uh, faintly through them you can see that the stripes go all the way around and they're translucent, you can see through them. This looks like a specular reflection of sunlight, which would mean that they're, it's not natural materials, but highly reflective materials. Here again, you can see the glassy character and the striping character. Uh, there are many examples of these uh, here and these uh, on a mesa at Cydonia. You can see that they cast shadows. Uh, here they network, uh, they're perpendicular here, they're seen in many sizes here. And in this uh, instance, uh, you can see the networking. Uh, there's one instance here where uh, the white stripes go in one direction here and the opposite direction here. So there we have uh, a crosshatch pattern, uh, which obviously sh shows that we can see through these things and also that they're... Um, it's very difficult uh, for m most natural formation mechanisms to make things that crisscross one another. Uh, there, here is a ca case where the tube seems to be uh, broken uh, by this object, and it, this is a collapsed tube, and this is an intact tube that's severed at this point. Um, this is an artist's concept. Uh, coloration always indicates artists uh, have had a go at it. Uh, here's a shape. Uh, in context and cut out. Looks a bit like a seahorse. Uh, you'd say, well, that's pretty imaginative. But actually, it's from an area in which there is a kind of dividing line, like a watermark level. And above that, you see th things uh, like the, uh, the stripes here, suggestive of a waterfall, of glaciers, of mountains, of, of a sky with stars in it. Things below uh, look like aquatic things. They're, there are many images uh, suggestive of aquatic creatures, such as this dolphin. Uh, and they're all, uh, the, uh, one of the things that suggests artificiality to these things, rather than just imagination, is the relationships to one another. They're organized. There's an aquatic area, there's an insect area, a mammal area, and so on. Uh, uh, this, uh, this is another object from one of those areas. This, um, th on the left is the original image, and on the